Okay, part three, we're finally going to get to the Cepheid variable uh, way of determining distance to stars, as well as the supernova line fitting, or curve fitting. And uh, so the first one is the Cepheid variables. Again, this is for something that is far away. Uh, it's a very, very bright star, and it's variable. And what was found was that there's a relationship between the pulsation period and the absolute magnitude of different types of Cepheids. And so on page six of your student guide, it describes, the question is, it's a type two Cepheid that has an apparent magnitude of 12 and a pulsation period of three days. So really what you have to do is you have to look at this little, this little graph and match up a type two Cepheid, which is this line right here. It's not an RR Lyrae, and it's not a type one Cepheid. It's a type two Cepheid. And it's got a period of three days, and therefore, if you go up from the x-axis, hit your type 2 Cepheid line, and go to the left to hit your y-axis, that particular type of Cepheid should have an absolute magnitude of negative 1. From there, you just have to use that calculator, that distance modulus calculator. So in this case, your apparent magnitude, they told us, was 12. That's the, that's the little m. Minus your absolute magnitude, which we just discovered from this graph, is negative 1. So you take 12 minus minus 1, that's your little m minus big M. And the rest of it is essentially just math. But you should wind, wind up with a distance to that star of about almost 4,000 parsecs. Okay? Now moving on to the supernova. Okay, a supernova is an exploding star. You can read the background to, uh, to get more information about what supernovae are. But to actually use the supernova, uh, supernova light curve fitting explorer, what you do is if I will work through the example in the student guide, this is at the bottom of page six. They want us to load the data for supernova 1995D. And notice we see it, it's way down here. It's a type one supernova, so we're going to make it match the typical curve or the typical profile for a type one supernova. And notice that we had to make it, we had to move it. That tells us that it must appear really dim, but it may not be a really dim supernova, it just may appear dim because it's so far away. And so we make it fit the existing curve, that red line, and then you just click on the, the horizontal bar and see the apparent magnitude, 16.9, compared to the absolute magnitude, negative 16.0. And you take the difference between those two and you put it into your distance modulus calculator. So like I said, I've got an apparent magnitude of 16.9. I've got an absolute magnitude of negative 16, and it spits out that my distance is 38 megaparsecs. It's really far away. And you do the similar thing for the actual question 13 on page 7, where we need supernova 1994AE. Notice this one, I have to drag it down, but I can still make it fit, and I've got my different values, and you take the difference you punch it into the into the into the uh, calculator here, 16.5 and negative 16. And notice this time it's about 31 par 31 megaparsecs is how far away that particular supernova is. And that's it. That pretty much takes you through the student guide. Now, after all that is said and done, you're going to look at your lab quiz, and you'll discover that to be honest, you really didn't need to do most of those simulations. The important part in answering the lab quiz is to read the background material. The first two questions deal with background page one, the fourth question deals with background page two, the fifth question and sixth question deal with background page three, and then pa questions eight and ten deal with background page six, and, qu and pr question seven deals with background page seven. So all, <laughs> when all is said and done, most of the, the simulations aren't part of the lab quiz, but I still think it's really instructive to understand these different types of stars, how far away they are, and how they can be used to determine the distance to those stars. And these the processes that physicists have figured out uh, in order to figure out these distances. And so again, it all goes back to the summary page where depending on the distance to the star, different techniques are used to, te to tease out that distance. Very fascinating. I hope you found it very enjoyable.